I saw a lot of people describe this as a win-win. Teddy, I've not yet heard yours or Bart's perspective, so let me hear from the two of you first. What, what is your take on Rodgers' decision to stay in Green Bay, how the contract looks, and what that team looks like to you? And what the team looks like to me is just they're, they're still, I think they're the leading candidate for the number one seed. I think they're my favorite in the NFC. I mean, Rodgers, of course, coming back. I mean, love Devondre Campbell coming back. I mean, I'm looking at David Bakhtiari. I mean, that left tackle, that's so important, the health of him. I mean, this team is right where it's supposed to be. I mean, you have problems losing to the Niners because of special teams, okay? You bring in Bisacci, I believe, okay? Mm -hmm. You have a great special teams coordinator, so you think you have your problems fixed. Let's see how they manage uh, Devontae Adams and his, his unwillingness to play in the franchise tag. But I think the Packers have shown they're willing to play the long game with whoever it may be. Mm -hmm. So I think the Green Bay Packers are, are my number one seed. I, I really like what they've done. How about the decision by Rodgers to stay there, Bart? It's something you sort of projected would happen. Well, this is kind of like backer to backer, right? I feel like this is backer on backer crime because I couldn't disagree more. You know, I think that, you know, Aaron <laughs> Rodgers and his unwillingness to leave a little bit more cheese or take a little cheese off the taco so they can go get some depth. Because this, this you talk about back area, right? He hasn't been healthy. You talk about Devontae Adams. They haven't been healthy. Now, they put the second round tender on Lazard, but they're going to lose Scanling. They don't have enough depth. So if these guys sustain an injury, they can't be able to ride off those wins. And this is about the regular season. Now, I've seen this team go 13 and 3, 13 and 3, and lose to Jimmy G twice. I still don't think they have enough depth. I still don't think they have, you know, you talk about special teams. Special teams isn't a result of the special team coach. It's a, it's, it's, it's a personnel issue when you talk about having great players, guys that can start in this league, but are just behind because you drafted well and because you brought in great players. So I still go with Tampa. No. I still, listen, there's going to no. be another team that emerges that I believe that can pass them because I don't think that they can stay healthy. Nobody can stay healthy with this new marathon season. Season. Teddy, let me ask you a question, if I may. Special because... teams, special teams is yeah. all about coaching. It's all about coaching because you force the head coach to give you the players that should be there, and also the scheme. I mean, that block punt that that was that was something that was a problem ever since week 15 when the long snapper wasn't being helped by the left guard or the right guard. That's but, but Teddy, coaching. When you don't use that, you don't use but, you, that scheme in terms of helping your long snapper. And that was the scheme that cost them the season with the block punt for a touchdown. So the special teams coach is of utmost importance. Okay, so, so let's leave that on the table for the moment. L let's talk about, so you're a guy who played for Bill Belichick. Those details were never missed. You're also a guy who played with Tom Brady. And we got into a pretty healthy debate on this show yesterday about the significance of Brady taking less money, accepting less money all those years, less cheese on the taco, as Bart just said. Um, and and Rodgers, while the contract is a little more team-friendly, clearly wasn't interested in going into that area. Teddy, how about that and the significance of Brady having been willing to do that for so much of his career. Yeah, it, it helps money-wise. Sure, it does. Bart's absolutely right about that. But when it comes to a player like Rodgers that's going to take all this money and not leave any cheese on the table like Bart's talking about, all right, you better do your job in terms of drafting. So, I mean, you got to bring in young players that, that you have scouted and, and are still able to contribute. So the pressure now is, is sort of on the scouting and the draft on the picks that they get third, fourth, fifth round, things like that. You're hoping those guys, and th they did their job, that they can come in and contribute with some type of backup role or when, you know, a player goes down and they have to play maybe one, two games, that's where the important is now stressed. And, and so Mike Tannebaum is a guy, as a general manager, you would make those tacos and you're looking for all the cheese you can get on them. What is your perspective on all this? I'm spraying the cheese as many places uh, as I can. And I think we need some context here. Today is March 16th. Like, we got a long way to go. Mm -hmm. And the difference between Tampa Bay and Green Bay is there's more cap space in Tampa Bay. It's warmer. There's no taxes down there. And in this arms race, Greeny, the benefit of the doubt has to go to Tampa Bay because they're going to add more players on one-year deal than Green Bay can. Well, let's talk about Green Bay's offseason, Dan. You're following it closely here. So the decision by Rodgers was one piece of the puzzle. What else is happening right there now around him? Well, you, uh, Bart mentioned they had to cut Zadarius Smith for cap reasons, but they were able to extend Preston Smith, right? They're trying to bring back Rasul Douglas, the cornerback. They've already brought back Devondre Campbell. So they're making it work uh, to some extent. 
I, I think, you know, there's time to get a deal done with Devontae Adams to avoid trouble there in terms of him not wanting to play. So the Packers knew because they want they made it clear they wanted Aaron Rodgers back. They knew what the contract was basically going to look like and what the challenges would be uh, with regard to the cap. So they've been at work on this a while. They'll be under the cap by four o'clock Eastern today, like everyone else will. Uh, and then they'll figure it out. The draft, you talk about receivers, Lazard, Valdez Scantling, even Devontae Adams. These are all receivers they drafted after the first round. They feel like they can find guys that can fill in that pipeline. But listen, you know, Teddy probably, I don't know if he started off on special teams like me, but it's about building a program. But it's also when those guys come of age, yeah. having enough money to give them those intermediate, that middle class type of contract right. that holds people down. My second contract was like three years, $15 million. But that allowed them to have a guy that still plays special teams, but was still able to to, to to really support Ray Lewis and Ray Lewis go down, it's not all going to go to hell. You know, what happens with them, if they lose any one of their top guys, it's a wrap because they don't have guys that can kind of kind of be Band-Aids. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.